So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple, they seem to be on their new weekly schedule instead of their bi-weekly schedule for the new beta releases because we just got iPadOS 15 beta 6 to all developers and probably to the public developers if not later today then probably first thing in the morning. So without further ado, we got iPadOS 15 beta 6 and again, the betas are getting higher and higher which means the actual tangible differences and features are gonna get smaller and smaller and it's all about bug fixes, improvements and making sure that we're ready and solidified for that third week in September when Apple announces the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 12S alongside iOS 15 and iPadOS 15. But we got a couple things here that we gotta take about because Apple did get rid of something which is gonna be very surprising and I wonder what they're gonna do now, but let's get into it. Okay, so let's get right into this video, everybody. So the first thing that we're gonna show you is if we go into the images, I took a screenshot and I posted on Twitter just how big the file size is gonna be. Very, very unlucky number. So we have 666 megabytes in order to get this update for iPadOS 15 developer beta six. And I would say give yourself at least twice that space, so one to 1.5 gigs in order to get this installed correctly. And even though I always say that, don't think that it's gonna take up already current space. It's basically gonna wash away the last update and replace it with this one. So you technically you don't need that much space, but I always like to give a little bit extra just to make sure that you know, you're know you not running um, pretty much empty when it comes to storage. So that is the actual size. And then if we go into the settings menu, we're gonna go into the about section. And let me know if you guys like the dark mode or the light mode better because you guys are kind of indifferent on in the middle. So I prefer normally to go dark mode, but we're gonna go light mode for the rest of this video. But if you guys can see, we are on software version 15. And if we click on there, you see that we're on 19A5325F. So the last two we had H and then before that, so we had G I believe. So we're just going down little by little. And I do believe we're gonna get anywhere from eight to 10 total betas. And it looks like Apple's back on their regular weekly schedule. So in the very beginning, they do a bi-weekly or maybe even longer for the first beta and then the second, third and fourth. And then once they get comfortable enough with their beta softwares and how they're running and how smooth they are, then they revert back to more bug fixes as opposed to tangible features and differences. And that's what we're gonna see a lot here. A lot of different bug fixes to make sure that it's running smoothly. And like I said, beta seven, eight, nine, maybe even 10 we're gonna to get to where there isn't gonna be many differences, all about performance updates to make sure that it's ready for the public. But there were a couple of big things that were mentioned and brought up with this beta update. And the first one is actually doesn't have much to do with the actual operating system. But I took a screenshot of it because I got an email, as you guys can see here, directly from Apple and their developer program. So if we go back to this, you can see that they're actually, for now, canceling SharePlay. So SharePlay was that feature that allowed you to share, you know, view content like Disney, Apple TV+, listen to music, and be able to share that content and watch it in real time at the same time with no latency with another person over FaceTime. So basically to watch a movie at the same time, and then it'll pause and play depending on who's pausing it and stuff like that. And it looks like for right now, they are getting rid of the SharePlay feature for the official release of iPadOS and iOS 15. So the letting us know that SharePlay has been disabled for the use of developer beta six versions and will be disabled in the upcoming beta six release of macOS Monterey or Monterey, however you guys say, like I say Monterey Jack Cheese. Um, it'll also be disabled for use in their initial releases this fall. So SharePlay will be enabled for use again in the future developer beta releases and will launch to the public in software updates this fall. So I think that Apple's gonna revert back because their SharePlay feature wasn't as precise and as perfect as it wanted it to be. And maybe they need everybody to be on iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 first before kind of testing it with some people on betas in 15 and some people still on the regular 14. So I believe we might get it on a 15.1 or a 15.2 update. Very similar to how we got cursor support on here with 13.4. Even though it was a major update, it was still not part of a major release. And I think that's what they're gonna do with SharePlay. They're gonna bring it back, make sure that it works correctly, and then eventually release it to the entire public because it is an awesome feature and people really like it. And now the real big feature that was added, and again, a lot of it has to do with iOS 15 on the iPhone side, which is what I'm using to record. But if you go into Safari, so one of the biggest things with Safari was how the address bar and the URL bars were at the bottom of the screen, right? So for both iPadOS and iOS, with iPadOS we never had that issue, but we did get these two new features, which is compact tab bar and separate tab bar, which essentially separates the actual URL bar into tabs. And then if I go back and we change this back to compact bar and go back to Safari, you can see that now it's all just different tabs up there with no URL bar. 
But what they did add with iPad OS was this open new tabs in background, which is something that I didn't see before. Before we had the show colors in the tab bar, which was also new, and then closed tabs. But now open new tabs in background is a new feature. And then with iOS 15, you're now able to bring that URL bar back up to the top. But one complaint that I do have, and I don't know, this could be just me, let me know in the comments below. But if we go back into Safari, I hate this new like bookmark tab menu, right? So if I go onto here, it brings me into this menu and then I gotta click into bookmarks and then I gotta go into my menu of bookmarks and go to the YouTube tabs and then click on the actual tab that I want. I feel like before with iOS and iPadOS 14, it was very quick and there was a lot less friction to get that task done. So right now I gotta go through like three or four different tiers to get to that bookmark. And let's say I do click on one, let it load up, I then have to go back and back and back and then finally it'll full screen again which is something that I really, really don't like with the new Safari. And then the other difference that I did notice is inside of settings, and then if you go to notifications, you can now see that we have a different kind of nomenclature and the way of naming these actual things, right? So before, it actually gave you like the type of notification style you were getting. So it would say like banner, comma, and then how it was showing, comma. But now, it's kind of taking the design language and the, the verbiage from focus modes and putting it onto here. So right now you have immediate, immediate, announce. So basically you have different ways of actually going through your notifications. So you can allow notifications. You now have the option to do immediate delivery and schedule summary as part of your focus summary, which these weren't here before. And then again, it just looks a little bit different in the way you style your notifications. And I think Apple's really diving into these focus modes to make it a little bit easier to, again, focus on the task at hand, whether it's work, leisure, personal, whatever the case may be. So this is another way to kind of revamp the notifications by kind of including them more into the focus modes and getting rid of the old nomenclature that we had before. And those are the only real differences. And then lastly, we'll go into battery, kind of show the battery of what we had with at least beta five. So if we go into the last 10 days, on a day like Monday, we had two hours and 34 minutes of screen on time. YouTube took up 32%. The home screen and lock screen by accident, I left on always on display, which drains a lot of battery if you leave it on, but LumaFusion 17%, 21 minutes. So again, battery life, we're gonna have to work with it a little bit more as time goes on to really get to that, but be sure to stay subscribed for that follow-up video that we'll have over the weekend to show you guys exactly how this beta is held up from a battery performance standpoint. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, and like I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, once we get into this beta five, six, seven, eight, you know, all the way up to 10 sometimes, depending on how many betas Apple is going to release, we're not gonna see that many new features, that many tangible differences, and especially not any more efficiency differences, right? This is all gonna be very surface level, like new icons that we saw in beta five and things like that. And then here, just kind of retouching some of the tools and some of the features that Apple kind of took away and then brought back, especially in the Safari realm on iOS 15. That was a big one. I know that a lot of people were very, very upset when they brought down the address bar to the bottom. One thing that I do really want them to fix is the bookmark menu on iPad OS 15 because it seems inefficient. I gotta go through like three or four different tiers to get to the actual bookmark that I want. And I feel like with iPad OS 14, it wasn't as tedious to get to those bookmarks, but that could be just me. But overall in terms of stability and efficiency and honestly working how it's supposed to, then yes, iPad OS 15 beta six has been very stable, even though it's still early on. The entire beta program has been extremely stable and this is probably the third year in a row that I've been testing out the betas and this one by far is the most stable. So if you guys do want to put it on one of your devices, by all means, go for it, especially now that the public beta testing program is out in the open. And I know that Apple actually wants more beta testers, so we have less issues when the public release actually comes out, like I said, in middle to late September. But that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike. They're always keeping us hooked up. And then Tiny Rigs as well. They're doing some awesome stuff with some cool iPad Pro accessories and iPad Air accessories. Everything's going to be linked down in the description below. But leave a comment below. Are you guys going to update to the iPad OS beta program? Or at this point, you know, you're probably only like a month to five weeks away from the official public release coming out. Are you just going to hold out? Let me know in the comments below. And like I said, stay tuned because we got some more awesome content, especially some Windows 365 content coming. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Thank you.